the AMA United States Motocross Nationals, presented by Honda. It may look like New England. It's not. It's the Pacific Northwest and the AMA National Motocross Championships at Washougal, Washington. Just a stone's throw from the beautiful Columbia River. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Huffman reporting from Washougal, Washington for Power Sports Video and round eight of the AMA 125 National Championship and the first round in the very important and highly prized by the factory's 500 National Championship. And the top riders are out today on a beautiful but very warm day here at Washougal, Washington. How warm is it? Well, these young ladies are turning out for the bikini contest, hosted by, and you can see him right there, the chicken man, Jeff Matasevich, which is something like putting the fox in the hen house. And there are some very pretty hens out here today. An exciting day of racing. Again, round eight of the 125 championship and round one of the 500s. Let's go to Matasevich and see what it takes to win today. Uh, pretty good. The track's in uh, really good condition. It's really fast. Uh, a lot of the top 125 riders are going about the same speed in pr uh, practice, it seems like. And uh, I think the key is it's going to be uh, who's got the faster bike. I think the faster bike's really going to help. There's some really big uphills where horsepower counts a lot. So I think horsepower is going to play a big key out there today. I feel pretty good. The track's uh, really well maintained. My bike's running really good. And in practice, I have you know a lot of good lap times, and I feel real comfortable today. What about the track itself? Um, the track's really nice. There's a lot of different kind of terrain. There's doubles. There's a whoop section. There's uphills. There's downhills. There's you know big high flying jumps, and you know the speed's real fast. So it's kind of a all around you know different kind of terrain track, and I think it suits me really good. My practice tracks are like this, and I think I'm going to have a good day today. The stage is set for moto number one in the 125 class. And remember, Bale, the Frenchman, comes into this race with a 14-point lead. But a moto win pays 20 points. And the sign goes sideways, and we're ready to go. Let's see what happens. 125 National Championship, round eight. It's getting down to the nitty-gritty. And they are underway. Out in front, it is a Suzuki. Looks like Denny Stevenson. Suzuki rider out in front. And Bale, the Frenchman, goes into second. Now Stevens, uh-oh, we've got a pile up, a single alert on, on the I-5 freeway, which connects Portland and Vancouver. We're just across the border in Washougal, Washington, on a beautiful day, but it is Stevenson in front and Bale running second. Let's see now, running third, looks to be Kawasaki team green rider Talon Bolin, then Larry Ward, Mike Kudrowski, and Oregonian Jeff Daly running in the top five. And he's Stevenson, 27, trying to hold on to the lead now, but he's got an injured wrist. And Bale is chasing him. Bale coming into this race with a big, big lead, a 14-point lead. Coming into this race, and Cooper is chasing him. Let's see what happens. Number 20, Matasevic, their mid-pack also. Jean-Michel Bale, the Frenchman. And the question is, can he pass Stevenson? as Cooper tries to move up. Bale has been absolutely unbelievable here. Yes, he has. That is Bale right there. Number 22 has passed out of our sight and taken over the lead. Is it going to be a runaway by the Frenchman who won Southwick? Stevenson holding on to second, but it is Jean-Michel Bale in front. Here's some interesting things. There's number 17, Ward. Larry Ward of Society Hill, South Carolina in second. Passes Stevenson, and he is chasing Bale. The crowd, uh, interesting point. Suzuki has not won an, oh! That's, that's, Bale, Bale has gone down. Bale went over a series of jumps and landed on the front wheel, he is up. Trying to get the bike back up again. That is Jean-Michel Bale, your points leader. The pride of Honda and 17 Ward has taken over the lead. 
Good golly, Miss Molly. Bale, a very simple get off. It didn't look like he tangled with anybody, but he went down faster than an Idaho thermometer in January. Maybe we can look back at that crash and try to figure out what happened. Here it is, slow motion. Watch Bale, shifts back and goes over the handlebars. Landed on the, on the, the final jump and Bale is on the, the side of the track sitting on the ambulance. There he is. And they're working on his right wrist. A tough break for Honda. And Dave Arnold, the Honda factory manager, is absolutely going insane in the pits. And right now it is this young gentleman, Larry Ward, number 17, out in front of the Suzuki. A start to say a moment ago. Suzuki has not won, now listen to this, has not won a national 125 championship since 1982 when Mark the Bomber Barnett won it. And let me tell you that Mark Blackwell and Bob Starr and the Suzuki staff are keeping their fingers crossed now to see if at least Stevenson can win, but they're, they're putting their hopes on Cooper, who is now starting to move up. Look at the crowd cheer on the Americans. Number 17, Larry Ward. 27, Denny Stevenson. And there's Cooper, and Cooper has gone to fourth. Cooper, what's he, 28 years old now out of Stillwater, Oklahoma? Got the prettiest wife in motocross. She does his pit board, handles his pit board, helps with the mechanics, an absolute beautiful young lady. And look at Cooper start to move up. 28 or 29, I'll check that out. But I believe Cooper is pushing 30. And he's, oh, 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 gets sideways. Cooper gets sideways. The crowd responds. It's 17 in front. Larry Ward, Suzuki. Then Stevenson running second. And I believe Cooper coming up now into third. Suddenly, Suzuki has put up millions of dollars in contingency money, and it is starting to pay off. Matasevich running about fifth now behind Cooper, but Cooper is starting to move up. There's Stevenson, number 17. I've checked that, Larry Ward, number 17. I stand corrected. Larry Ward, your leader. That's not Jeff Ward's brother. They have, are no relation whatsoever. And Cooper moving up also, trying to put the pressure on. Let's watch this now. This is an interesting battle. Cooper is 14 points behind Bale, but he knows now that Bale is out of the race. There's Cooper. So now Cooper starting to put the pressure on to move up. Guy Cooper has spent a lot of nights in the Hotel Dodge. That's what Tony DeStefano coined his Dodge van when he started out racing at 15. He slept in the van at night, worked on his own bike. Look at this battle. Stan cuts Cooper going in front. They are handlebar to handlebar, and the, the Suzuki team, Ron Heben is uh, shaking his head, saying, hey, guys, you race with each other. Don't put each other out. Look what happened to Bale. But Cooper looks to have taken over the lead. Number four, and he wants to put that number one plate on that RM2, uh, RM125 Suzuki this year. Cooper is in front, ladies and gentlemen. And he has taken the lead. The checkered flag comes out, and Cooper wins. Moto number one, Larry Ward second, Mike Larocco third. It is a Suzuki sweep. Volan in fourth, and Emig, the Kawasaki rider, in fifth. We'll be back with all the action from Washougal in just a moment. Welcome back to Washougal, Washington, ladies and gentlemen. Larry Huffman calling the action for the U.S. Motocross Nationals. And the eyes of the crowd here are on Jeff Ward, defending champion. Have you done a lot of practicing on it? Well, not as much as last year, and none of us really had because the 250 Nationals just ended, you know, two weeks ago. And uh, compared to last year, we had five weekends off, so that's all we got to do was ride that. So we've had a couple weeks plus prior testing sessions in the middle of the 250s, but um, I feel comfortable today. What's the biggest difference for you, uh, 500, 250? Uh, the biggest difference, you know, is the power, you know, power to the ground. If the uh, track gets slippery, uh, 500 is a handful. It's hard to stop. It's a little heavier, but... Um, my riding style, since I'm smooth, I'm not erratic or wide open, it, uh, it fits me really well. Uh, feeling real well. Uh, Washer goes a great track, good facility, good to be here. Real good. Uh, Notice some blisters on your hand there. Is that from the 500, or you've been working on that all season? No, I actually got burnt in a fire, and uh, just a stupid little mistake, but uh, we're here to race and just keep them go. 
Yeah, that, uh, that's going to be painful for you. Um, do, do you like the track a lot? Is there any part of the track that would be particularly tricky, you think? Uh, the track's good. It's, it's high speed, gets really rough, gets choppy. Um, a lot of tight corners, I think that'll swear, separate some of the guys. So uh, looking forward to going out there and having a good race. With you. You're on the 500 today. Uh, have you had a lot of practice time on it? Yeah, I have had quite a bit of practice time on it. I've spent every day this week on it and been testing for a few weeks. So uh, a 500 Honda is working real well for us. Stanton is not a very excited person normally, but he seemed even more subdued there. Well, let's see what happens and what happened with the hand, the burn. Maybe that will be a factor in the first moto. We're underway. The 500 National Championship on the line for the first time in 1990. And it is Warty out in front, but we've got a collision. Two riders, triple digits, are down and out, and that's it for them. Meanwhile, Jeff Ward is doing what he did last year, and that's uh, lead this championship. He beat Stanton by 21 points. And Wardy is out in front, and Mike Fisher looks to be running second. And Stanton in third. Fisher, a local rider, and an excellent rider, I might add. A big heavyweight kid. A tough Northwestern rider. Nope, it's Stanton passing him already, and Stanton has gone into second. So Fisher drops to third, Stanton second. Another rider a lot of people are watching today, Rick Johnson. Earlier this year, I had lunch with Roger DeCoster, the team manager for Honda, or the man in charge of the entire Honda racing operation, and he confided in me. A lot of people are wondering if Rick Johnson is through or if he will come back. He said, I don't know. We'll have to see. And this year, we'll tell the tale, and it has not been a great year for Ricky Johnson. Johnson reported to be in mid-pack. It is Wardy in front and Stanton in second spot. Jeff Ward, the only rider in AMA history to win championships in all four classes, 125, 250, 500, and Supercross. And Stanton would like to duplicate that feat. But it is Jeff Ward in front and in control at this point. A hot August day, Washougal, Washington, just across the Columbia River from Portland, Oregon. Although the track has been prepared beautifully, a minimum of dust so far. There is Jeff Ward. That's a lap rider in front of him. Stanton is running second. Johnson mid-pack starting to move up. We understand Johnson and O'Mara, a couple of seasoned veterans, are tangling back in mid-pack. We'll try to get a look at them. There's Johnson, number 13, and O'Mara, number 9, running about 5th and 6th, respectively, at this point. Jeff Ward, 5'8", the Kawasaki Press Kit release claims. I don't know if that's true or not. Jeff is very small in stature, but, stature, but has the heart of a lion. And this kid is tougher than the Israeli army when it comes to passing. You cannot pass him unless you throw everything but the kitchen sink at him. There's Stanton in second. Now remember, Stanton lost the championship to Ward last year by 21 points. That's all. 21 points. That's a moto and a, and a fraction. And he'd like to win it again. He'd like to win it this year. Stanton. And take it away from Wardy. And Wardy would like to hold on to it. The battle continues. Early in the first moto in the 125 championship. Look at the, the lead these guys have got on the rest of the pack. Mike Fisher running third. But it is Jeff Ward who is such a consummate professional. He is so good. That's a lap rider between them. That's Stanton, number two, running in second spot behind a triple-digit rider. Jeff Ward, extremely serious, not flashy at all, extremely serious about his training and about his riding. Five foot eight, 160 pounds, according to the official Kawasaki press kit. Wardy can half squat 350 pounds. He has enormous leg power, and you need it on a, on a big bike like this. He's on a KX500. Remember, these are like the top fuel dragsters of motocross racing. If you've ever ridden one, you know what I mean. If you've not, you should try to ride one sometime, but hold on to your hat. Whoa, that is uh, O'Mara. He gets up again, and that's Johnson going by him, and they're battling for fifth. Johnson carrying the number 13 plate. Wardy going around a slower rider, lap rider. There's Stanton, number two, in second. Stanton said, we came here to race today. You heard the interview earlier. But right now, he's running in second spot and not putting any pressure on at all on Jeff Ward. 
Beautiful day here in Washougal. Had the pleasure of announcing this race a couple of years. They first did it back here in the in the southern Washington area, just just across the river, literally on the Oregon border. And I announced the first and second races, I believe, here. Larry Ward, my or Larry uh, Myers, my colleague, is on the microphone today here. And I'm here with you in the Power Sports video coverage of this AMA 125 and 250 National Championship. There is number 13, and that is Johnson. Johnson on the Honda, trying to move up. They were battling with Greg Zibert, Zitterkopf, who was a, on an ATK a few moments ago, a four-stroke. He was making things rough for them. Johnson says, you're not know supposed to do this. Get the heck out of the way. I'm Ricky Johnson. Jeff Ward, who has been racing since he was four years old. And the crowd kind of walking away and, and just letting him go. Um, if it gets close and the action starts getting hot and heavy, if Stan reels him in, you'll see a lot of cheering. But so far, the crowd is cheering. The, the fans, the partisan fans, are cheering for Wardy. But there's no real action going on as Wardy motors away in this first moto. There is Stanton, number two. And there is Johnson and uh, O'Mara battling back in fourth and fifth spot, respectively. Johnson still hurting from that injured wrist, suffered earlier this year. Stanton, six feet tall, 180 pounds, Sherwood, uh, Michigan. Stanton's kind of like a young Jimmy Stewart, doesn't say much, tall, lanky, good-looking kid, but doesn't say a whole lot, not flashy at all, nothing like Johnson and Ward is somewhat in between. Wardy, look at him, that's a KX500, a monster horsepower, putting in the neighborhood of 50, 55 horsepower out. A 220 pound, two wheel projectile. You won't see Wardy wave to the crowd unless he is way out in front, and feels extremely confident. He is a, not a flashy rider. Stand number two in second spot. Mike Fisher running, I believe about third at this point. And there it is, Wardy takes it. The first 500 moto. Uneventful, yes, but uh, Kawasaki will take that. Thank you very much. Stanton second, Fisher on the Kawasaki fourth. O'Mara manages to get by Johnson for fourth, and Ricky Johnson finishes in fifth. And you're watching Sports Channel coverage. The scenery is pretty here at Washougal. Here's the word from Moto Number One, the 125 Championship. Jean-Michel Bale has a broken right arm, and now Guy Cooper talks about what it's going to take to win today. It's going to be tricky where they overwater it because um, they disc it up, and it gets a real good base to it. Um, there's loamy turns, but right where everyone's running, it packs down, and it's pretty hard packed. But they water in between the motos, and so it's really slippery. It's like riding on a sheet of ice. Um, where they've overwatered it, and you always have to use the outside lines. Uh, I like it whenever it gets right to the point where it's almost dusty, but there's no ice patch, you know, no ice patches on it. You can really pin it hard. So um, the first couple laps are going to have to be really um, conservative for me, and then after that, I'll have to um, pin it and start going. Right. How's the bike running? Bike's running really good. We've done a little bit of changes to it. I've got the 91 chassis and motor. And um, it runs about as strong as the 90, but we've had a lot more time to work on the 90. This is um, going in on the, the eighth race, and uh, I've only got this week on the 91. Since the chassis was different, um, our previous bikes we've been testing and working on hasn't been this change of geometry. You go really fast, and then there's some um, tight sections. So you, you sort of get a little screwed up because you're going so fast, and then you slow down so much. So uh, I'd say in the tight stuff, there's there's going to be uh, some mistakes made, and uh, that's where you're going to have to capitalize on, I think, in the tight stuff. Yeah. Well, I think probably the trickiest part is going to be the whoop section with all the doubles coming before the finish line. If you kind of mess up, it kind of messes you up for the whole, you know, the whole straightaway. So you got to be real smooth through there and really concentrate. And I think if you can go through there fast today, you're going to have a really good chance of being up in front. Well, with Bale out of the contention for the championship, uh, it's uh, anybody's game, but Cooper has got to have the edge. The riders move up to the line now for the 125 second and final moto. 
Guy Cooper has now officially gone in front in the 125 National Championship by virtue of his 20 points in the first moto. So Cooper is on a roll. The 28-year-old from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Let's watch him as we get set now for the start of moto number two. Underway, 125cc two-wheel projectiles down the long straightaway. The right-hand turn, nobody down. They slam into the hay bales, but it is a Suzuki out front, Denny Stevenson. It's Denny Stevenson in front, Buddy Antonez running second. That is uh, Ward, Chad Peterson, LaRocco, Volan, Matasovic, Smith, and Cooper. Cooper running about eighth spot at this point. I got a feeling this is going to be an interesting moto. Stevenson, who had the whole shot in the first moto, out in front now on a uh, Suzuki. Denny Stevenson. But Buddy Antonez, Antonez is number 60. He's out of Ontario, California. A Pro-Am support ride running in second spot. And there they fly. And the eyes of this crowd are on Cooper. They know with Bale out, Cooper has a chance now to move firmly in the lead. But the question is, can he get a good, can he, can he move up? He got a bad start. Cooper running about eight now. Can he move up and pass seven of the riders and take over the lead? Stevenson in front. Denny Stevenson, number 27. There he is. And there's a battle for second. Oh! Down! I believe that is Ward. I could not see, but it looks like Ward may have gone down. The same place that, the place that Bale crashed. There is Stevenson in front. It looks like Buddy Antonez. Yes, Antonez. Oh! And Stevenson is down! Holy Toledo, what a tough break. The front wheel just washed out. Antonez was two or three bike lengths behind him, and Stevenson went down. So Buddy Antonez of Ontario, California, has taken the lead, number 60. And he's being pressured now by number 10, and that is Mike Morocco. Suzuki, one and two. And the Suzuki officials last year said, what are we going to do about a team and about supporting the riders? They decided to open up the Suzuki checkbook, and they put a tremendous amount of money out in contingency. The factory ranks of riders are shrinking, but a privateer can go out and buy an RM250 or 125 and make it go fast. There's uh, Matasevich, and he's running about uh, third. Yes, Matasevich is third. And they go for the contingency. It saves them from the half-million-dollar salaries of some of the riders, which Johnson, was, they say, was making a million dollars two or three years ago, Ricky Johnson. Instead, Suzuki decided to spread the wealth around and put up a lot of contingency, millions of dollars in contingency. That's why you see guys like Antonio switching and Morocco switching from Yamaha to Suzuki. Antonio is number 60 in front. Followed by number 10, Mike LaRocco, the rock of LaPorte, Indiana. That's a lapped rider between thir uh, second and third. It is a, a moment ago as it went by Matasevich running in third spot. We'll check it and see. Washugal, Washington, ladies and gentlemen. AMA National Motocross Championship, 125 class. Here is Anthony, here's LaRocco. Mike LaRocco went by on the inside around Antonez, where Antonez did not expect it. I said there's a lap rider. I think that is Chad Peterson running in third spot. Do not have a listing on him. But it is number 10 at this point, Michael LaRocco III. LaPorte, Indiana, number 10. Morocco's 5'10", 160 pounds. He's a snow skier. He rode a factory Yamaha, actually a factory support ride last year. Switched to Suzuki this year on a Pro-Am type basis. Morocco is 19 years old. Antonez second, either one third. And that is uh, number 20, Matasevich in fourth spot. Cooper running about seventh now at this point. But I think Cooper's chances for a sweeper today have gone up in smoke. That's uh, Matasevich, the chicken man, running in third spot, number 20. Matasevich has a turbo Porsche and a Toyota four-wheel drive and spends $10,000 a year on insurance. True, true story. He did the Matas attack video, the motor uh, video. Jeff Rupert interviewed him. He said, yeah, I spend 10 grand a year and I, it's a good to drive two cars. A lot of people don't make that much. Tasevich does not have the greatest driving record in the world, we might point out, ladies and gentlemen. 
All right, the battle on. It's uh, Larocco in front. Antonez running second, and in third spot now is Matasevich. That little tricky part of the track, it's where Bale crashed before, seems to be giving the riders a problem. There's Cooper. Cooper moving up. Cooper got a bad start. But Kudrowski crashed in the first turn of the first lap. Mike Kudrowski, defending champion. And Cooper now starting to make a move, starting to move into the top five. But I think it is too little too late, but Cooper never count this kid out. He does not know when to quit. Matasevich moving up. Cooper right behind Matasevich. Look at this. Number eight, Damon Bradshaw also into the top five. Cooper up to about fourth now. There's um, number 10 running in the lead, Michael Rocco. Here's a good shot of Larocco. Excellent camera crew here. It's a camera work. Our sports video. You're watching it on the Sports Channel every Sunday night, 9.30 Eastern Time, nationwide. I'm Larry Huffman calling the action from Washougal, Washington. A very warm day, but look at the lack of dust. There's 10, Larocco. Big lead. Larocco's just got it, just stretching it out. Meanwhile, that, uh, holy Toledo, Cooper has gone to second. Guy Cooper, I don't believe this. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not believe this. Cooper has gone to second. He has passed Matasevich for a second, and Matasevich is ticked off. Cooper was running eighth and suddenly has rocketed into second spot. And Larocco has been warned by his mechanic that number four is closing. That's a lap rider between them. There's Cooper, number four, in second. Cooper is 28 years old. Morocco is 19. The guy Cooper got a bad start. He's not a tremendous starter. And he's worked his way up to second spot in the second and final 125 moto. Now the momentum, the, the pump he got from the first moto from winning has got to be figuring into the second moto because he's riding a hell of a race. Listen to the crowd, cheer him on. Listen to him, cheer on Cooper. Suzuki has not won, believe it or not, a 125 national championship since Mark the Bomber Barnett did it back in 1982. And Cooper wants to give that number one plate back to Suzuki and pick up about $100,000 in cash for doing it. There's number 10, Larocco. Mike Larocco. Five foot ten, 160 pounds. He was runner up in 89 in the West Coast 125 championship. Won three 125 races in 1988. His 250 came a national championship in 1987. Champion in 1987. But it is uh, Cooper now. The crowd is watching. Number four, Guy Cooper of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Second place. It'll give him a first overall. If he wins, if he stays in this position. Can he reel him in? There's Cooper. There's a lap rider between him. That's the lap rider in the white jersey. I think it's 471. Guy Cooper running in second. Mike LaRocco in third. The Rock of LaPorte, Indiana. The left rider, the slower rider moves over and lets Cooper go by. And Cooper is riding a beautiful race. You know, Cooper's in incredibly good shape. Very serious about training. Morocco, number 10. Blue jersey, yellow RM 250. In front, these are basically production bikes. The AMA outlawed works bikes about three years ago. A lot of people complained about that. Bob Hanna was one. He said people want to see exotic equipment. They don't want to see a biking bike off the showroom floor. Well, that's not true. Crowds are up. Supercross races, crowds are up. And the average rider has a chance, more of a chance, certainly not an equal chance, to be on equal equipment with the pros. Cooper picking his way through the forest here in Washougal, Washington. Mike LaRocco doing a beautiful job, but I don't know for how long. I would not have bet that Cooper could get up this close to him within striking distance. Rob Heeman, the two, a Suzuki team manager, watching this little battle anxiously. 
Let's see if we can get a shot of the two of them, how close they are. Well, there's Kudrowski, number one, and he crashed. He hit the back of Cooper's bike in the first lap and went down. Number four, Cooper in second. There's your leader. There's a, there's a shot between them. We were talking about it. And there, look at, look at the crowd. Cheer him on. Mike LaRocco, number 10. It lands hard. When his head goes forward like that, it it's kind of indicates that he's getting tired. And he's taking a tremendous pounding on this very tough, difficult Washougal track. And Cooper is reeling him in. Look at this. Right on his back tire. Cooper on it like a Krishna on an airport traveler. And Cooper passes. Guy Cooper has taken the lead. I don't believe it. You got to think there's something wrong with Morocco's bike, although it was running fine when it went by us a moment ago. But Cooper has taken the lead. I don't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, Guy Cooper heading for the checkered flag. He's got it. He has won both motos. He has won overall, and he has gone out in front. More importantly, he has taken over the lead in the 125 championship. Morocco second, Matasevich third, Ward fourth, and Damon Bradshaw on the Yamaha fifth. Incredible. Cooper in front in the standings. Don't go away. We've still got the 500 national moto coming up next. And the second moto is on the line, and a lot of people here are watching Ricky Johnson to find out if Ricky can come back and do You're it again. You're on a 500 today. What kind of new problems does that present for you? Uh, really none. We've been doing a lot of testing with the 500s. Jeff Stan and I have been out uh, numerous days this year, and uh, we feel we've got our bike dialed in. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that it's the best machine out there. Now it's just up to Jeff and I to, to put, it in the win put it in the winter circle. Oh, good. What about the track itself? Well, the track itself is uh, in the best condition I've seen it in years. Uh, they've got it watered really well. They've got it graded and uh, real loamy, so it's going to get good and rough all day. It's just uh, a matter of keeping the dust down is going to be the factor. But um, my hat's off to them. They've done a, a, a one job on the track today, and everything looks great from the from all the spectator stands to uh, to the racetrack itself. I've been here for 10 years that they've had the race, and. Um... I think I've won here five times. I've never placed out of the top five, so I like the track. It's fast. The dirt always stays really tacky, and uh, it's got a lot of ruts. I like ruts, so it's got a lot of combinations that uh, suit my style. When Jeff Ward says he likes it rough, you can believe he's not lying. Here we go, the second moto. Ward ran away from the first moto. Stanton was second. Let's see what happens now. Down that not very long straightaway into the right-hand turn, it is Stanton and Ward battling up in front. O'Meara trying to break through into third. And one rider down. Triple-digit rider, Kawasaki bites the dust. Dust becoming a little bit of a factor now. Look at this. It is hot and dusty here today. Hot and dry, I should say. The dust not been a factor until today, until now, this moto. This is the final 500cc National Motocross Championship, the final moto of today. Ward leads the championship by winning the first moto. And there's Stanton, and Stanton is out in front. And this is exactly what happened in the first moto when Ward went out in front, and Stanton had to chase him for the whole moto. Who's in second? Jeff Ward. Well, surprise. Who was in third? I don't know. They're <laughs> so far back. It is Stanton in front, and Wardy in second. Different style. Notice that. Stanton's six feet tall, 180 pounds. Ward about 5'8", 160. They have different riding styles entirely. You can watch and learn a lot from a, a show, a video show, moto, on how to ride yourself. And every top rider has a collection of videos in his home, and he watches them when he's not racing. Believe me, this is true, and a lot of riders are watching this show right now. Jeff Stanton, Sherwood, Michigan, in front. Jeff Ward, Mission Viejo, California, now living in Capistrano Beach, just down the street from me, only he's got a lot higher mortgage payment. He's got a house that looks like the Holiday Inn. He just finished it not long ago, and he moved, lived in, uh, lives in Capistrano Beach, California now. Watch the different styles, the totally dissimilar styles of Stanton and Ward. Wardy has the lead. He with 20 points from the first moto. Stanton is second with 17. And let's see what happens now if Wardy can now reel in Stanton. Johnny O'Mara is running third. And Ricky Johnson is somewhere in mid-pack. We have the report 
from Nate Rauba of Cycle News that uh, Ricky got a terrible start. And he's not been working, has not been practicing starts lately. And he is about mid-pack. Ricky Johnson, not probably not going to be a factor here today. But Jeff Stanton is. Make no, request, no mistake about that. Beautiful day here at Washougal. The crowds perhaps evenly divided between uh, Ward and Stanton. And Wardy now reeling Stanton in. Can he do it? Can he pull it? Can he pass him? He goes to the inside. Stan stays to the outside. Stanton is not an easy man to pass. Here's Ward. No, Stanton shuts him off. And Wardy knows that, that if he hits that rear wheel of, of Stanton, he will be down instantly. Take out that front wheel, and Wardy will be taking a soil sample of this rich Washington's soil. The blood red Honda against the lime green Kawasaki. O'Mara into third. Johnny O, the O Show. Interesting story with O'Mara. We'll talk about it in a minute. Let's watch this battle now. Wardy on the inside. Does he get him? Wardy has taken the lead. Now it's Stanton's turn to play catch up. He is right on the back tire of Jeff Ward. And anything can happen, ladies and gentlemen. These guys are professionals, each earning six figure incomes. They're not going to do anything stupid. Well, I don't think they're going to do anything stupid. The second and final 500 moto. And Wardy has gone by Stanton and taken over the lead, and he is starting to pull away. The question is, can he hold on to that lead? You saw our interview earlier, and Stanton's hands were badly burned. I do not know what happened. He was not real happy about it, but he's got peeling skin on his hand, hand from the fingers. Could make it hard to hold on. Wardy said it, this is a tough, very difficult, rutted, bumpy track. He says, that's what I like. So Wardy is holding on to the lead, and Stanton is now trying to play catch up. Ward starting to pull away now. Will it be a Kawasaki sweep for Ward? Cooper won both the 125 motos, remember? Taken over the lead, and Bale is out with a broken arm. The 125 championship. That will probably do it for the Frenchman. Tough break, too. He's been a, a fierce competitor all year long. Well, are we seeing a replay of the first moto in which Ward got out in front, and Stanton seemed content to sit in second spot? and bide his time. Now, the way the rules are, if, if Stanton wins the second moto and Ward is second, even though their points are tied, Stanton will be the winner because he won the last moto. But if Wardy wins, obviously he will be the winner overall by virtue of the fact that he has won both the motos. Good shot of Wardy. There's a section where Bale bailed out earlier and broke his arm. I don't know why, he just went down. Jeff seems to be putting a little distance in time between himself and Stanton. It's Dave Arnold who just walked out there and, and yelled at Stanton. That's the Honda team manager, Arnold, who's a racer himself, races the Baja 1000. And he was yelling something at Stanton. I don't know what he was saying, but uh, we'll see if it had any effect on Jeff. Well, it looks like it did because Stan is coming right up behind Jeff Ward now and now putting the pressure on. That might have been what Arnold was telling him. Keep the pressure on. They go through the ruts and there are lap riders ahead of them. And here's Stanton trying to pass. Right on the back tire of Ward. He's standing like they lit a fire underneath his butt. And he is putting the pressure on Ward and he's going to pass. Let's see. Let's see. Yes. Stan is taking the lead. Let's listen to the crowd. They're cheering him on. Stan suddenly came alive. And now Wardy has got to play catch up. But Jeff Stanton is on the gas and starting to pull. Well, I can't say he's pulling away yet, but he is certainly looking strong. Look at the crowd cheer him on. And look at Stanton pull away. Yes, now he is pulling away from Ward. 
There was an old joke going around one time when, when Lachine was, was riding for, I believe, Yamaha at the time. There's O'Mara, and O'Mara's running third. And Lachine is notorious for running hot and cold. When he is on and wants to win, there is no one who can touch him. But when he doesn't want to win, I could beat him. And there was a, a word one time that Kenny Clark, when Lachine was on a Yamaha, walked, when Lachine was not doing well, walked out and waved a contract at Lachine while he was on the line. I don't know if it's true or not, but it, that's what the story was. And Lachine got the word and started, started going faster. Well, I don't know what Dave Arnold said, but suddenly uh, Jeff Stanton, this young gentleman, number two, is definitely increasing his velocity. Wardy knows that he, if he finishes second, he will have second overall, but he will be, and this is important to remember, that Wardy will be tied with a first and a second, 20 and 17 points respectively. Both Ward and uh, Stanton will be tied with 37 points apiece. But let's talk about prestige and winning this race overall. And you can bet the factories have got their ads ready to go on whoever wins this race. There'll be full-page ads in Cycle News and everywhere else they can think to put them to tell if Ward or Stanton won it. And right now, Stanton is in control. Jeff Stanton began riding motorcycles six years old. He began racing at seven. That's exactly what Ward did. Back he was about four or five, actually. He started racing mini cycles. He won $50,000 for winning the Supercross Championship. Stanton did now in 1989. He was runner-up last year to Wardy, to this young gentleman. Well, we're down to the final couple of laps. And the question is, can Wardy reel in Stanton? And I got to say, Stanton's looking awfully good, but I was wrong before about Cooper coming back. But look at the lead now. Stanton has, has over Ward. There is Stanton. There's Ward. Getting kind of close. No. Nope. Different shot. Here's Stanton. Here's number two, Jeff Stanton. There's Wardy, another Kawasaki rider. I was mistaken. That was a Kawasaki rider running second, but he was lapped. It is, it is Stanton, in, firmly in control on the Blood Red Honda. This 500 CC bike's put out well over 50 horsepower. They weigh about 200 pounds. It's like the power to weight ratio of a top fuel dragster. You ever ride one, let me tell you, they are, they will put the fear of God back in you. And these guys are not fearless at all. Wardy going after Stanton, but I don't think there's enough time. I could be wrong. Stanton looking good, not making mistakes, not wobbling at all, coming down, completing control on the jumps. No mistakes at all. Here's Wardy. Leaping a little farther, but I think it's too little too late. It looks like Stanton is going to go for the gold on this one, and that'll get him, him an overall win. Jeff Stanton, if he continues on for a few more moments. White flag, one lap to go. And Stanton is in control. Now, Wardy, that normally acts like a red flag does to a bull and reacts to a white flag and starts to come alive, but he has not done yet so yet. It is Stanton in control. There goes Stanton up the uphill. And Ward is nowhere in sight. He is in second, but out of our sight. O'Mara third. It is Honda, Kawasaki, Kawasaki. And Stan looks behind and what the hell happened? Where'd Wardy go? He waves to the crowd. He knows he's got this one wrapped up. He's still looking around. He still can't figure out what happened to Ward. And Jeff did not go down. He just slowed down. Stan's not slowing down at all. He's still on the gas, heading for the checkered flag. And taking the accolades of the crowd and a well-deserved round of applause, it is. He waves to the crowd. Look at him. You know a rider's confident there. He's waving and cheering, and the crowd loves him. Almost 12,000 people here at Washougal. There's Wardy in second. And Stanton takes it home. And there's Dave Arnold, says, you did it. I don't know what he said, but whatever he said, he better remember those words. Ward second, O'Mara third. Fisher fourth in the Kawasaki, and Ricky Johnson, not bad, Finish, finishes fifth. Not bad at all for Ricky. We'll be back in just a moment with the wrap-up. Don't go away. We're back at Washougal, and how does Guy Cooper feel about winning overall today? Well, I'm riding really aggressive now, and uh, with uh, teammates like Mike and Larry both helping me out out here, 
Um, we stole a lot of points from the Honda guys that finished, and uh, Bale crashed out. And I don't really like to win that way. I'd like to be able to. I've heard all year long he's the world's best, and um, I wanted to contest him clear to the last race and hopefully come out on top of that battle. But um, I will take it any way I can. It's my seventh year at it, and I want to win. So Guy Cooper wins overall, goes firmly in front of Bale. Jeff Stanton, overall in the 500 class, Wardy second, but they've tied on points. O'Mara third, the point standings, Fisher fourth, Johnson fifth. How does Johnny O'Mara feel, perhaps in the twilight of a great career? Well, he had this to say to announcer Larry Myers. There's so many good guys now. It's not like just a few of us uh, that shine. It's all the young guys on the Suzuki team and, uh, you know, my teammate, Ms. Passage. There's so many good guys now. It's... Uh, it makes it difficult for everybody, not just me. Even the, you know, Jeff Stanton, I mean, he's been around a long time, but he's only 21 or 22 years old, and they call him a veteran. But, you know, I'm quite a bit older than him, and uh, there's a lot of young guys, guns out there shooting for us. And that does it, ladies and gentlemen, as Jeff Stanton takes it overall today, but moves into a tie with Jeff Ward for the 500 National Championship. It's been a great day of racing with Guy Cooper firmly in front in the 125 class. So from Washuga, Washington, and the AMA National Motocross Championships, I'm Larry Huffman. Thanks for joining us.